Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Once America's greatest steel producing city. For the past 25 years, Joel Tarr has been cataloguing the changing face of its industrial landscape. Here we have a picture of Pittsburgh in 1940, before the Pittsburgh Renaissance had redesigned the downtown area, and also before the steel industry had collapsed. At this time, the downtown area was still occupied by old railroad yards and warehouses and other kinds of industrial use. Um, in addition, the banks of the rivers, particularly the Monongahela River, were lined with integrated steel mills. And um, as words go in the Pete Seeger song, Smoky Old Town, the river was solid iron from the Keys Port down. Fifty years ago, Pittsburgh was a very contaminated place. The air was contaminated with smoke, the rivers were filled with industrial waste and human wastes, um, and also the land was contaminated. Yet to a large extent, many people were prepared to make the trade-off between jobs and good jobs and a relatively polluted environment. Uh, they were exposed to smoke, for instance, um, and to noise close to the mills. Now, they didn't necessarily like it, but it was a trade-off they were prepared to make. Today, of course, um, uh, the air is much cleaner, the rivers are cleaner, the slag is being removed or, or shaped and developed, and um, people's tolerance for risk has actually gone down. They are sensitive um, and they know about various kinds of risks that they have to incur, so that we we become a relatively more risk-conscious society and a liability-oriented society also that's prepared to sue um, when exposed to perceived risks of some kind. The legacy of risk from old industries has been a major constraint on the redevelopment of Pittsburgh's many brownfield sites. Just half a mile from downtown Pittsburgh, what was known as Hare's Island is now a highly desirable development called Washington's Landing. It was at one point an agricultural island in the 19th century, but in the late 19th century it became um, heavily used for industrial purposes. It was a major stopping point for cattle being shipped from Chicago to New York, and there were um, uh, abattoirs here and there were other facilities for um, housing cattle and feeding them. Um, there also were other industrial um, um, uses on the island. There was a junkyard, um, and there was also a major burial ground for not only the carcasses of the animals that died here, but also for the zoo, the Pittsburgh Zoo. And so, for instance, when they began to clean up this island, they discovered um, elephant bones. The heavy contamination of the site was for many years a barrier to redevelopment. One thing that happened here that was critical was that we had a change in our legislation which made it possible to clean up sites to standards that were appropriate to the use that they were going to be used. So if it's not going to be a playground with kids rolling around in the dirt, if it's not going to be a field where you're farming crops that might pull up heavy, heavy metals, then you might be willing to tolerate a higher level of risk if you're just going to pave it over and you can be assured that there's not going to be migration of, uh, of hazardous substances, you might be willing to tolerate a higher level of risk. So we had legislation that made it possible to consider alternative levels of cleanup and then we had a process that allowed citizens to consider whether they wanted to make these trade-offs in a way that was credible. Legislators may have opened the door to redevelopment but historians play an important role in identifying the hidden hazards. So it's often easy to forget um, what had been, what kind of um, activity had been on a particular site 75, 100 years ago. And yet these activities, be they a gas manufacturing plant, for instance, or a coke plant, could have left a inheritance, uh, a burden of, um, of, um, of toxic substances that were buried and forgotten about. The cleanup of Hare's Island involved burying the hazardous materials in a lined and capped area at the northern end of the island. The site is monitored to ensure that there's no buildup of gases and no seepage into the surrounding river. The environmental and health risks are so low that the burial area forms the centerpiece of the leisure zone of this successful brownfield site. Thank <laughs> you.